is now laying the groundwork introducing legislation that, if passed, will allow the province to join BC's proposed class action lawsuit against dozens of opioid manufacturers. More than 40 defendants are named in the proposed lawsuit, including manufacturers like Purdue Pharma, the makers of OxyContin, and distributors where opioids are sold like shoppers' drug mart. Joining us this morning is lawyer Jasmine Daya, and in the interest of transparency, my sister Caroline Mulroney is Ontario's Attorney General. Jasmine, great to see you. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's talk numbers. The first nine months of 2018, those are the latest numbers on record. More than 3,000 people died of opioid-related deaths uh, in Canada. Um, and the provinces essentially are seeking to recoup some of the health care costs associated with treating these emergency situations. How would a government go about trying to prove the responsibility of Shoppers Drug Mart, for example, and Purdue Pharma as another example? Well, it's not going to be easy. We definitely have a crisis. I think they are taking the right steps uh, in following suit with BC. So BC was hardest hit with the opioid crisis and the related deaths, followed closely by Ontario and then Alberta. And I think that they definitely need to try to do something to recoup the costs. Okay, but um, there have been cases where um, um Pharma companies have declared bankruptcy uh, as a way to sort of save their hide uh, in situations like this. Uh, isn't there a risk that if these cases go forward and are successful, uh, we could find ourselves in a place where these drugs that, that do serve a real medical purpose uh, could become scarce? It is extremely important that the government, as well as their lawyers, don't lose sight of why they're doing this. So the reason they're doing this is to recover costs. So they have to be very smart about this. You know, a very good outcome would be a negotiated settlement. Perhaps there is not an admission of liability by these companies, but a settlement outside of court. You don't want to get tied up with litigation. OxyContin hit the market in 1996, and in 2007, there was a class action by individuals, and it was only recently where settlement was discussed. However, a class action, a settlement requires court approval. Ontario and Quebec have approved that settlement in that class action. Saskatchewan does not. It's 12 years later, and that is still ongoing. What about what's going on in Oklahoma? Because there's a case that's beginning today where the state is suing two big pharma companies for $10 billion. Uh, is that something that, A, the governments of Ontario and British Columbia will be paying attention to, and B, could that, is there any way that whatever judgment happens there could have an impact on what happens up here in Canada? They absolutely are paying attention to what is going on down there because it's new. We don't have something to follow. And so by figuring out what happens down there, there will be legal precedent set that can carry over here. It would not have as much weight as if the, the lawsuit was in Canada, but it can certainly carry over. They'll also learn a lot about information and strategy that will be useful. Jasmine Dye, thank you so much. This is an important court case we should all be paying attention to. Thank you so much. Thank you.